Hello, welcome to Thrive Groups. We're so glad to have you here with us this week. We're gonna jump right in, but before we do that, we wanna go over kind of our guidelines here. The first is that we wanna encourage everyone to contribute, but no one to dominate. So we wanna make sure we give opportunity for everyone to share their thoughts and stories along with everyone else. Also, we start on time, we end on time. So once the group's over, let's wrap things up and let's stay respectful of the location that we are in. So we're gonna jump right in here. First question. What was your dream job as a kid? What was your dream job? For me, uh, just almost as long as I can remember, I wanted to be a professional musician, I wanted to travel around, tour the world, uh, playing uh, music, and I had some opportunities to do a little bit of that, not as much as I would have liked, but, but that was my dream job when I was growing up. How about you? What was your dream job when you were a kid? Okay, so we're in a series right now called Wind Chasers, and we're studying the book of Ecclesiastes. This week, we're talking about death of all things. Man, it's kind of a downer of a topic, I admit, but the Bible has a lot to say about it. So we're going to read Ecclesiastes 9, chapter, uh, chapter 9, verse 2 through 4, and discuss what stands out to us. So I'll read it. It says, The same destiny ultimately awaits everyone, whether righteous or wicked, good or bad, ceremonially clean or unclean, religious or irreligious, Good people receive the same treatment as sinners, and people who make promises to God are treated like people who don't. Seems so tragic that everyone under the sun suffers the same fate. That is why people are not more careful to be good. Instead, they choose their own mad course, for they have no hope. Instead, there's nothing ahead but death anyway. There's only hope for the living. As they say, it's better to be a live dog than a dead dog lion. Um, so that's verse, but I, you know, in, in the notes, I didn't have this other one, but I want to add this one in as well. And it's first Corinthians 15, 54 and 57. So whatever stands out to you out of these two verses. Okay. So here's the next one. It says then when our dying bodies have been transformed into bodies that will never die, the scripture will be fulfilled. Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? For sin is a sting that results in death and the law gives sin its power. But thank God, he gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. So let's take a few moments and discuss whatever stood out to you in those verses. Okay, next question here is share about how a sorrow shaped your life. For me, when I was about six years old, my parents were, were expecting a child and I had always wanted a brother and here was the chance and um, the baby died at birth. And it was very tragic for our entire family. We, I took it pretty hard as a young kid. And, um, and, and I was very sad about it for many years. But what it helped me with is it helped me to realize the reality of heaven. It made heaven re very real to me. And, and it gave me that expectation that I would get to see my brother someday. And so even though in this tragic situation that we went through as a family, we had the hope of knowing we would get to be reunited with him one day. So how about you? What sorrow shaped your life? Okay, next question here is, tell about a time you had hope during loss. Now, this can be any kind of loss. It doesn't have to be just uh, death, but I'll share one that has to do with death. And it's when my grandfather passed away many years ago. And it was certainly a sad time because we loved him, clearly. But, uh, but it was a celebration because he had lived a good life and he had um, really instilled, you know, God's love into his family. And he was a, a great man and really loved the Lord and loved his, his wife, my grandma and his kids and, and loved us grandkids. And, and so even at the time of loss, I remember we, we were just, we had joy. We were, we were, um, we had hope during, I remember after his funeral, we're just gathering around and we're just telling stories uh, of his life and things that he did. And we were just laughing until we cried. You know, it was just, it was really a celebration of his life. So how about you? Tell about a time when you had hope during loss. Next question here is this, what are you investing in that lasts? We can invest in all kinds of things, but what are you like? How are you leaving a legacy in your life? More than just maybe some money. What are you doing that will last? So let's take a few minutes and discuss that. Okay, well, thank you guys so much for coming this week. And before we go, we're going to close in a word of prayer. I believe there's power when we pray together. So I would like to encourage you to each take a few moments and just say a simple prayer if you'd like to. Ask God for something, give him a request, 
ask for guidance, whatever it may be. When you're done, you say, man, the next person will go. And then your leader will close it up. So again, thank you so much for joining us today. Let's close in prayer.